of Israel, the nation, the chosen people are a nation. He said, you shall be a nation, a, a royal nation, a holy nation, a nation of priests and ministers, a nation. You understand? Praise Yah. So the word church is nation. So what the Messiah is saying is, upon this rock that is himself, I'm going to build my nation. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm going to build my nation. A nation built on the Father's spirit of righteousness that's given to the through Messiah's sacrifice. He shall not fail. So when he came, he was quiet. So that Yukon said, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Messiah said, suffer it to be so now. For thus it be behooveth us to fulfill all righteousness. Messiah is our example. So as he was baptized for repentance, so we are baptized for repentance. He's our example. He says, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to, to fulfill all righteousness. And let me tell you something. That's very good news, brothers and sisters. And I'm not talking about like, good news gospel. I'm talking about that's just very good news. That's very gospel. Let me tell you why. Because when Messiah got baptized, right, the father took note of his baptism. And, and, the, and the spirit descended on him like a dove. And the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Well, let me tell you, as we get ready to get sealed, which Asatan sees coming, which is why he's reacting so strongly. But when he sees us getting ready to get baptized in the father's spirit, father going to make another announcement. These are my children in whom I am well pleased. We praise Yah for Messiah because Messiah said, greater works than these shall ye do because I go to my father. Brothers and sisters, we're in a spiritual war. We need to get spiritual. You hear what I'm saying? We need to believe in the spirit of the most high. We need to trust in it, trust in his word. We need to walk in his spirit. Because that's where our power is. We're not going to get power going to City Hall, brothers and sisters. We're not going to get power going to the White House. We're not going to get power in Congress or in the Senate. That's our Satan's territory. I don't care what. Look, man. Hey, listen. Since the 1960s, right? Well, first off, first off, let's take a little history lesson real quick, right? So after the after the Emancipation Proclamation, which Lincoln did not want to sign because he did not want to free the slaves, but he wanted to save the Union. So he needed them brothers to come in there. But it was really the Most High's doing to spank them for what they done to us. But even after that, see, so the, the place was destroyed. The whole nation was destroyed, particularly the East Coast. It was destroyed up and down. From Virginia all the way down to Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Atlanta was destroyed. The place was wrapped up, man, because of the war, right? So during the Reconstruction, which the Hebrews had a large part in rebuilding this mess, that's why Atlanta for a long time was changed. Now, now it's homosexual city. But back in the day, Atlanta was like a, a mecca for black people in America. Why? Because we rebuilt it. We rebuilt it. The first black bank in the United States was in Atlanta. And, and they would have burned Atlanta down like they did Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Rosewood. But there was too many of us there. Still is. See? There's too many of us there. They ain't going to go where they outnumbered cowards. Anyway, so we rebuilt the joint. After we rebuilt it, during that reconstruction time, many brothers was becoming senators and congress people and taking important positions in, in, the, um, in the states and, and, and helping write laws that would help us. But then, as soon as the place was rebuilt, our enemies came back with a vengeance and brought in Jim Crow and brought in a Confederate president, Andrew Johnson, and was putting us back in change quick. Quick. See, they use us when they need something. Y'all need to remember that. They use you when they need something, not like they're doing you a favor. They are never doing you a favor. Even what's going on right now is a trick. You think because the world is recognizing us that we've been oppressed in this country that we're going to get what we got coming in terms of reparations? You think they're going to give us laws that's really going to help us? Let me tell you what this is about, brothers and sisters. This is about the mark of the beast. People just don't see it yet. This is about a religious rally that's getting ready to come. People just don't see it yet. 
Asatan's going to be reacting very strongly because this what's going on right now is causing thousands of brethren awakening all over the world that wasn't awake before. Thousands of people are awakening to this truth. See, that's not going to be on CNN. That's not going to be on MSNBC. That's not going to be on Fox News. But that's what's happening. Thousands of brothers and sisters are awakening to this truth all over the world right now. They're convicted. And once the dust settles from all these murders and these, they, 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 they put these, these white boys in jail that did this, did this murders, once all the dust settles, right, they're going to be saying, you know, as a result of, the, of that, all that violence that took place, a lot of so-called, you know, they're going to say African-Americans are turning to this cult. They're believing they're Israelites. We, you know, we have to come together in unity. And you're going to see a revival take place among Christian churches and among, among uh, Islam also. You're going to see Farrakhan leading a revival among the nation of Islam. You're going to see Christian pastors leading a revival. All that's, all that's done as a result, as a behest of Rome. Then you're going to see the Pope sweep and make some statements and everybody bow to him. That's the way this is working. It's a trick. Remember, they never want to help us. Ever. Most High is allowing this for us to wake up. And I believe it's taking that effect as people are now awakening to this truth. And then the awakened ones will just get stronger in the faith and in the spirit. That's what we get in our power from. See, walking on water, you can't buy that. <laughs> you can't buy that. There's no amount of money that somebody can train you to walk on water. Raising the dead. Healing sickness and disease. These are the miracles that the Father's power is going to be performing through us very shortly. And you can't buy that with money. But you can only get it through the Father's power. Being able to go 40 days with no food, no water, and not be affected like Moses did twice. We're going to be able to do that. And it's going to be by not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Most High. See, we need power. And now is the time to go after it. Now is the time. And Asatan knows that. He's very scared of us. Let me tell you, he wants to kill us. That's why he's reacting. He's reacting. But it's all good. Isaiah chapter 42. So he shall not fail nor be discouraged. Father knows the end from the beginning. He has already let loose the word. He's going to have a righteous nation. It's going to be called Israel. They're going to have David as their king in Jerusalem. He's going to have the new Jerusalem set on this planet. He's going to destroy the Edomites that are on his land. With Edom and Moab that's on his land. It's going to destroy them. And it's going to establish Israel. And all the, the Gentiles that are, that, are, that are converted to the truth, he's going to save them and establish the kingdom. It's coming. Asatan knows it. That's why he's angry. He's reacting. Always remember, father doesn't react to him. He reacts to the father. So when you see crazy things happening on here and you see a lot of bloodshed, just remember, Asatan's reacting. Father is already doing Nothing surprises him. Isaiah chapter 42. Let's start at verse 5 and go down. Let's go from verse 5 and 6. Watch carefully, brothers and sisters, because watch from verse 5 and 6. For thus saith the Most High, Yahweh, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth bread unto the people upon it, and the spirit to them that walk therein. I, Yahweh, have called thee, that is you Israelites, in righteousness, and will hold thy hand, and will keep thee, and will give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light to the Gentiles, for a light to the Gentiles. You see, people holding their breath. Waiting for them Ashkenazis to fulfill this prophecy. They're going to die of lack of oxygen. Because them fools ain't Israelites. What is this saying? It's saying that he's giving the Messiah and through the Messiah, the Israelite people as a light 
to the Gentiles. A light to the Gentiles. Think of the implications. This truth that I'm spitting to you right now, the Gentiles that are saved are going to receive this truth. The Gentiles that are saved are going to receive this truth. That's why we can say very safely, we can see what the Bible says is going to save one, six of them, because five, six of them are going to be destroyed. Why? Because they're not going to receive this truth I'm spitting. Five, the majority are not going to receive it. Especially here in the United States of America, I guarantee the ones that's going to receive most of it are going to be people like in other Caucasian nations, in Norway or Denmark or someplace. They're going to receive it more than these Americans. Most of them are going to be destroyed. And I got to tell you what, we're not going to shed a tear. We're not. They're going to deserve what they got coming. But this truth that I'm spitting right here, this righteous by faith truth, this this rising by faith truth through the his the, the true Israelite people, the people that they that they mark by their color, the same ones, the descendants of slaves, it can save them if they want to receive it. I have no problem sharing it with them. I, I baptized several Caucasians. They know it. I baptized several of them that have received this truth willingly. And you know what they have in common besides being Caucasian? They was all poor. They've all been beaten up and eaten up by the same system we have. That's why they can see it. And they are rare, even among them. Rare. Even among them. Most of them are going to be destroyed. See? He said, he the one that created the heavens. What does that sound like? He said, Yahweh Most High that created the heavens and stretched them out. Remember the first angel's message? Fear Yah and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of water. It says here, thus said the most high Yahweh that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth that which cometh out of it. He that giveth bread to, breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I Yahweh have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light to the Gentiles. There it is. Same thing. See, I told you we in the first angel's message right now. Because we know that we all, there's only one true God. His name is Yah. He is a God of righteousness and truth. He is a God of his word. And we are one with him. He has chosen us as his people. Why? Because of his friend, Abraham. We are the children of his friend, Abraham. And Abraham's son, Isaac. And Isaac's son, Jacob, who, he, who Yah named Israel. We are Israel's children. Especially us right here in the Americas, in Jamaica, in, in Haiti. We the royal house of Judah, baby. The royal house of Judah. Some of us might be Levites because Levites was in Judah. Benjamin was in Judah. We don't, we all mixed up. They didn't divide us up by tribe when we come out of it. We were just running, right? But we the royal house of the southern kingdom of Judah. I don't know about the northern kingdom, but we the royal house of the southern kingdom of Judah. And Judah is the lawgiver. That's why it's starting here. Why do you think the United States is the center point? Because prophecy said this is the lamb-like beast that speaks like a lamb, that's, uh, that looks like a lamb and speaks like a dragon. And exercises all the power of the first beast roam before him. And causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And they said to the earth that we should make an image to the beast whose deadly wound was healed. And they got the path that they gave life to the image of the beast, that the image should both speak and cause as many was not worshiped. The image should be killed. That's why we here. You know, really. You know, I ain't got no money. I got some Social Security coming in a few years. They probably going to snatch that. My wife and I was thinking, man, we should move someplace like Ghana. I got good friends in Ghana. And you know, it's cheaper there. You know, well, I'll move someplace like, you know, Central America somewhere or South America, like my brother was talking about Colombia, someplace like that, where we can live on that, you know, on that Social Security cheap because we ain't got no money. But you know what? <laughs> we can plan all we want. Most High has me right here. 
Because at the end of the day, we're going to be where he wants us to be, right? And this is where the thick of it is right here. And really, the truth is, I might have desires about where I want to go. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be where y'all places me. Because all of us soldiers, aren't we? Aren't we? We're going to be where he puts us. Wherever that is. I'm in the D.C. area now. I don't know where he's going to put me next, but I know he's going to put me somewhere. And I'll be there. There I'll be. All of us that's following him is the same way. We might make plans about where we want to go, but the truth is, really, when we're giving over to Yah's spirit, we go where he wants us to go. You understand? Not where we want to go. Because you know what? It's not my will. We learn this from the Messiah, right? Not my will, Father. Thy will be done. Not according to thy, my will, but thou. That's what he said. And that's our example. And he and wherever he leads us, he's going to protect us. If I'm not worried about where it is. Listen, if he can pull Lot out of the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on now. You think he's angels stop rescuing people? I don't think so. They've rescued me several times. I'm sure you know about that yourself. Uh, Isaiah chapter 42. I'm going to give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Watch this now. Watch this. Verse 7. Verse 7. And verse 8. Verse 7 and 8. To open blind eyes. To bring out prisoners from the prison. And then that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Ahiah, Yahweh, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise unto graven images. Oh boy, brothers. It's, it says in English, I am the Lord. Now we know very well, the Lord is not his name. We know very well. We know very well, that's not his name. His name is Yah. That's why he said, that is my name. Yahweh, he told Moses, by, uh, by Al Shaddai, I was known unto, my, unto your fathers. But by Yahweh, I was not known unto them. That's why you see the word Yahweh, Exodus, Je Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the books of, Mo books of Moses, because Moses wrote them, and he knew Yah's name was Yahweh when he wrote them. But Abraham knew him as Al Shaddai, the Almighty. Okay, but now we know him as a nation, as Yah. We didn't know him before, but now he's awakening us. Before we called him Lord and God, didn't we? We called him Lord and God. Sometimes we call him Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Sometimes we call him that. Correct? Some people, unfortunately, still call him that because they're not awakened yet. But we have been awakened. As his true people, his bloodline Israelites of the southern kingdom of the royal house of David. And we know his name, Yah, short for Yahweh. We know his name. You Gentiles want to know his name? Listen to what I just said. His name is Yah, short for, for Yahweh. Yahweh. Now, some people of our, of our brothers want to say Yahuwah. I have no problem with that. I don't. But I'm convicted is Yahawah. And his son is Yahawah Shai. Yahawah Shai. Learn it. That's his name. Say so he's not going to give his glory to another. You know, his praise to graven images. Let me tell you what the graven images are. The cross, the wooden cross, that's a graven image. He not with that. The block of stone in the middle of Saudi Arabia that they call Mecca, he not with that. He not giving his glory to the graven images. Nor to man-made institutions like the Catholic Church and all of her little whores called Evangelical churches. He not giving his glory to graven images. Fear Yah and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth to see and all the things that are therein. 
that's the most high Yahweh, the father of Yahweh Shai, creator of all things. Let me introduce you to him. Isaiah chapter 42, let's continue. Isaiah 42, from verse 9, from verse 9, down from verse 9 to verse 11. Wait, from verse 9 to verse 12, right? All right, I'm going to go from 9 to 12. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Didn't I tell you he's Alpha and Omega? Didn't I say that? Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto Yahweh a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea and all that, that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof, let the inhabitants in the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the tops of mountains. Let them give glory unto Yahweh and declare his praise to the islands. You know why he says it like this? Because his chosen people have been scattered into all of those places, the isles, the mountains, the valleys, the nations. We as his chosen people have been scattered all over. And because of the color of our skin, people look at us and call us all kind of name and make us a byword. You could always tell when we're in a nation, just go to the poorest area. And that's where we be. Just go to the people that are discriminated against the most. That's where we are all over the earth. But now, as we are awakening, we should be giving him the praise because we know we're about to be delivered. His spirit is, a, is being poured out upon us. We know it's coming. Oh yes, it's sad what's happening to our brothers. How they slaughtering our brothers in the street. Of course, it makes us very angry, but let us remember that's Asatan's reaction. We need to just be awakening. I, I, I mean, I'm all with it. I heard the sister, one sister say, burn this whole thing down. I hear you. But that's how, that's not prophecy. We're going to awaken and, and the Messiah is going to burn it down. We're, we're going to help him. <laughs> we're going to take it over. But it starts with an awakening. It starts with an awakening of perfect righteousness. It's going to end with their destruction. Yes, the Bible does say that. It's going to end with their destruction. But it starts with an awakening of perfect righteousness. Praise the Most High Yah. It starts with us overcoming sin. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Can you imagine a nation, a third of all the Hebrews on the planet, a third of all the hundreds of millions of Hebrews on the planet in righteousness and truth, rejecting all false religions and all false gods and following Yah. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? It's coming. It's coming. Isaiah chapter 42. Start at verse 13. I'm going to start at verse 13. Oh, yes. I'm going to go down from verse 13 to verse 16. Isaiah 42 from 13 to 16. Yahweh shall go forth as a mighty man. Mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. That's what he's saying. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs and will make the rivers, islands, and will dry up the pool. I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will, I will make darkness light before them, crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Yes, he's going to bless his people, the ones that were blind, all of us brothers and sisters coming out of darkness. I said, time to see with the whole world. Remember that. Always remember that. All of us coming out of deception, all of us. And he's saying, I'm going I'm I'm to bring the blind by the way, by a way. That's what he's doing even now. He's going to do more of it as we get sealed. 
And as that final message of warning goes to the earth, that Revelation 18 message, that Revelation 14, the three angels message, which the first angels have already started. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice, fear Yah and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. That's the message right now, the everlasting gospel. That is the message of perfect righteousness. That is the message of power from on high that causes the righteousness of the father to be revealed. That is the message of a coming Messiah that's coming to destroy all these kingdoms and take them. That's the seventh trumpet, by the way. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah. Just and true are thy ways, and he shall destroy them that destroy the earth. That's what's coming. And that's the message. Starts with the everlasting gospel of power, of righteousness, of the spirit of Yah. It starts with us surrendering and repenting and coming to our Father so that we are completely given over to walk in his spirit and his will, just like Noah was, just like Abraham was, just like Isaac and Jacob was. It's going to take all of that, just like Moses, like our Messiah himself. It's going to take all of that. Praise the Most High. And he promises he's going to take care of us. Don't we just read these promises, man? I'm going to lead the, bring the blind by, by a way they knew not. I will lead them in the path that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Yes, brothers and sisters, you know why he got to say that to us, that he's not going to forsake us? Because every human being on earth is going to forsake us. Every government, every human being, all your friends, all your family, they're going to forsake you. Y'all got to get used to that idea. To remember, everybody pretty much that you know is going to forsake you. Your best friend might stab you in the back. May not happen now, but it's because of this truth. This truth is a sword. The Most High said his word is like a hammer. Yeah, he does. Watch this, watch this. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Hold on. Man, I can't even find it now. Shoot. But he said his word, his word is like a hammer and, and it crushes. And, and he said, most, the Messiah said he ain't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. So brothers and sisters, people are going to be. Yeah, people are going to be, people are going to be turning on people, man. That's what's going to happen. People are going to be turning on people. That's what's going to happen. Yep. Ain't talking about false prophets. Yeah, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I gotta find this here. Hold on. Read a lot. And then sometimes I can't remember where I last read it. Sometimes I don't mark it. There it is. I found it. Praise the most high. Yeah. It's in Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Yeah, man. Watch this. Jeremiah 23. Uh, from verse 25 down to verse uh, yeah, from verse 23 down to verse 33. Yes, 23 to 33. Watch what it say. But if they had stood in my counsel and had called, excuse me, I am, am excuse me, I'm sorry, verse 23. Am I a God that at hand, saith Yahweh, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith Yahweh? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith Yahweh? I have heard what the prophet said, that prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophecy lies? 
Yea, they are prophets of the seat of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith Yahweh? Is not my word like a fire, saith Yahweh, and like a hammer, and breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahweh, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. And behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahweh, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophecy false dreams, saith Yahweh, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith Yahweh. And when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask thee, say, what is the burden of Yahweh? Thou shalt say unto them, what burden? I will even forsake you, saith Yahweh. Yeah, liars. Yo, he sees it. He said, I a long time holding my peace. We just read it. He said, a long time I've been holding my peace. But I'm not going to hold it anymore. It's time, brothers and sisters. It is time. I'm going to stop here. We'll continue this when we come back tomorrow by the grace of the Most High. But yeah, it is time. It has begun. We really, really need to go to our Father. Get to know him. Get to know his word. Trust in him. Learn his promises. Because that's going to strengthen us. That's going to help deliver us in the times just ahead of us as Asatan continues his reactions to what the Most High is already doing. Amen. <laughs>